for almost two years now, these past two years, maybe a year and a half, I have been working in retail. Now, admittedly, I'm not all that thrilled. I'm not all that thrilled about retail, uh, specifically retail with as it relates to men's clothing, men's suits, tuxedos, those sorts of things. And this occupation that I'm doing doesn't thrill me all that much. I'm not all that stoked about fashion, for example. But when I go into my job, I'm, well, I've worked in retail before, so I, I've learned over the course and I'm continually reminded over the course of my life that even though I may not be thrilled by my job at the time, there is still a lot of things that I can learn about myself and about life maybe even. There's even, there's even in this case, um, there's occasions when there's a sort of language that is used within, for example, uh, retail that can help bring um, additional analogies to things that I may think about outside of retail. For example, for example, okay? This is a very indispensable tool for me in what I do because I spend you know, quite a bit of time measuring people's necks and chests and waist sizes so that we get them in the product that fits them properly. And this is the customer's, when the customer's experience something in terms of what really helps get us to where we want to be, and that is the customer being in something that fits them properly. They certainly would recognize this measuring tape as being a very significant tool in that process. And I could make the assertion that this is it, that this measuring tape is the giant in the land of, of retail and of, of getting us what, where we need to be, where we want to be. And, and, but I don't, and I wouldn't do that because really when I look at this experience, I understand that although this measuring tape is certainly the most immediate experience that, that the customer and I have with regards to what gets us to where we want to be, it is nonetheless, it is, it is not the only element involved in getting us to where we want to be. And getting us to where we want to be, there's also notions of what is fashion? What is fashionable? How should a garment fit you? How should a garment fit you? And who goes about determining how that, how the, how those pants should fit? Where you, where those pants should be pulled up to? And that's the job of what I jokingly call the fashion police. Um, <laughs> some group of people out there somewhere, and 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 largely, of course, they. You know, the fashion police go off of, of, of what younger people are buying and older people because they want to accomplish not only just giving people, you know, these, getting uh, these garments to people that are fashionable, but they, of course, want to make money. And so you see this, you know, there's a lot of different things in there. But this is not, this is not the only thing that brings it all together. This measuring tape is, will not change. I mean, these numbers, are, they, they're going to stick, they're going to stay this way, all right? They're going to stick the same, but fashion does change. Fashion certainly changes. We will have people that uh, will come in and perhaps they want to wear a three-button suit. Well, three-button suits, suits aren't all that fashionable anymore. Uh, Double-breasted suits aren't really all that fashionable anymore. But we still sell those sorts of things, and people certainly could wear them, and perhaps at some time they may come back into fashion, who determines that? Well, I'm sure that's a whole nother video to talk about who determines what's fashionable and how that how that all plays out. And, but that's not what this video is about. This video is, is about how, given what I've been learning at my job and, and the use of these things, it got me thinking about assertions that I've heard over the years with regards to science and how science gets presented sometimes as being supreme in the land. And people may say things to the effect of, 
Without science, we wouldn't have this. We wouldn't have that. You wouldn't have the camera you're, fil you're filming on right now. Without science, we wouldn't have all these things. And frequently, they will contrast, they will contrast science with religion. And may ask the question, what has religion given us? Reli you know, and perhaps they may say something to the effect of, religion hasn't given us nearly as much as what science has given us. And despite the inadequacies of my analogy, it got me thinking about this <laughs> measuring tape and how this measuring tape, although very indispensable in much of what I do, is only one element, a very significant part of, of, of accomplishing the goal that we have in mind. But there are other elements involved too. Other elements that are not based upon a standard, you know, numbering, strict system. Other elements involving artistry and imagination and creativity and the establishing of, of notions of fashion and beauty. Those are all, and, and not just that, but there's also elements that perhaps I wouldn't even consider because they aren't immediate to me. Things like the development, the history of something, for example. I had a prom student come in yesterday, and or a wedding party came in yesterday, and they're asking about the pocket silk. And they wanted to know what's, what's the purpose of a pocket silk, and that's a great question. And when you look at the history of a pocket silk, you learn how the pocket silk initially, because we didn't have tissue back there, we didn't have Kleenex, Kleenex back in the day, they had pocket silks. And those handkerchiefs were used to blow their nose and they would go from the pocket in the jacket to the pocket of the pants after it had been used. But you see there was a transition between that handkerchief and to becoming more than just a handkerchief. It became sort of a fashion statement and it continues today to be a sort of, well, it's a fashion statement. This didn't establish the fashion statement. The measuring tape didn't establish the fashion statement. It certainly perhaps may have played a role in, in making the product, but it didn't establish what that product would necessarily be. And so I'm gonna leave the rest to you to think about and figure out perhaps where I may be going with this because I realize that I can try and explain these things, but I also understand that part of my thinking about it is because I've experienced it. And so I don't, I'm not looking at it from simply a perspective, and I reject this way of thinking that somehow it's just science. Oh, just science. Like that's that's the only that's the only way I the only options I have to look at this camera that I have here is oh science. No, I reject that way of thinking. I have absolutely no. Why do I need to accept that way of thinking? As though science gave me this video camera. It's not that it's not valuable or not significant, but science I understand to be just one component, one element, and bringing together this video camera that I am now using. And even though those things are maybe very immediate, the most immediate experience, maybe those numbers, maybe those, those chemicals that get put together and used, and those equations and those theories, maybe the most immediate thing, but behind the immediacy of those things stands history as well and culture and imagination and creativity. And who's to say which one is truly the most significant and most important? Anyways, this is some thoughts. Y'all take care and peace be with you.